On My Life Wednesday this week, I go to extremes. From little beaters to hippos. Now you may find today's video a little strange because the two species I've chosen to speak about are as far apart in every way that you could possibly imagine. How do you mean? Well, the first one is the little bee eater, a beautiful little bird I had hoped I might get to see while in the Masai Mara because it's highly unlikely that I'll ever see one in Ireland. And I'm glad to say not only did I get to see some but I got some really nice pictures to remember them by. Little bee eaters are resident in much of sub-Saharan Africa and their name certainly suits them as they are the smallest of all African bee eaters. But though they're small in size they're certainly not small in number because it's estimated that there are somewhere between 60 to 80 million of them. Well, that's a lot for the bees to be scared of. The second species in today's episode is the hippopotamus. Are you beginning to see why I think you might find that the connection between them is a little bit strange? Yeah, I am. So why'd you put them together? Sure they've got nothing in common. Oh, go away. If you just listen, I'll explain. While one is a bird of the air, and quite a small one at that, the hippo is a huge semi-aquatic mammal, and while on land, only the elephant and rhinoceros are heavier. So, what's the connection? And I'm glad I got that question in before that nutter came back. Oh yeah? Oh, I spoke too soon. Well, there's no direct connection between the two as far as I know, but for me, there always will be a connection in my memory bank that has a permanent picture of the Mara River, which will forever remind me of a couple of hours I spent along the river bank, photographing the great and the small, the beautiful and not so beautiful in their natural habitat. Now, there were other occasions when I spent time by the river, an hour here, an hour there. But the picture in my mind is more specific than general and really only concerns little bee eaters and hippos. Because even now as I speak about it, I recall it like two interconnected scenes from a movie. I was about to say hippopotamuses love water, but I decided against it because hippopotamus is too long a word with too many syllables that my tongue is likely to trip over, so I'll just call them hippos from here on. And yes, hippos do spend a lot of time in the water, up to 16 hours a day. This is apparently why the Greeks gave them the name River Horse. They stay submerged in the water to prevent their bodies becoming overheated under the hot African sun. And with their eyes and nostrils high on their head, they're able to keep the majority of their body under the water. Hippos leave the water at sunset and travel up to six miles inland to graze, where they eat about 80 pounds of grass, which is not a lot considering their size. But getting back to the picture in my head with the two interconnected scenes, in the first scene, I'm walking along by the edge of the river with my two bodyguards. Yes, two of the lads from the camp came along to make sure I was safe from any possible attack. And before you ask, no, they were not armed with semi-automatic weapons, but each one had a spear and a long blade knife. But they certainly made me feel safe. We hadn't walked far from camp when in the distance, I could see a bird fly up and catch an insect and fly back to its perch. Although it was a good 60 yards or so away, the behaviour was obvious to me. This was an insect catcher, but what kind? I'd yet to get close enough to find out. And I did actually get very close. Close enough to get some really nice pictures of what turned out to be a bee eater. 
a little bee eater. The second scene had me lying prostrate on the ground, sheltered by one of the few small trees along this section of the river. This was keeping me well shaded from the extremely hot sun. But I was in this position for well over an hour and without realising it, the lower half of my right leg was actually outside the shade and got quite badly burned without me even realising it. But at least I had some great hippo photographs to remind me why it had happened. These are just two of the many special memories I brought back from my time in the Mara, where each day was filled with special moments. Will I ever get to go back again? I don't know, but I hope I do. But whether I do or not, I have many of these special memories, and I've been lucky enough to be able to share them with others through this weekly series here on YouTube. And here comes the advertisement through my book, From Sunrise to Sunset, which you can buy using the link down below the video, okay? Or if you prefer, there's a preview if you sign up for a free PDF. Whichever you choose, I hope you enjoy them. And I also hope you enjoy today's slideshow of Little Bee Eaters and Hippos. Thanks again for watching Wildlife Wednesday, folks. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And if you did, I'd be grateful if you'd give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And when you do, don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. If you'd like to purchase a copy of From Sunrise to Sunset, you can follow the link below the video. Till next week, stay safe, stay healthy. Wash your hands and wear a mask where necessary while continuing to maintain social distancing. We're not out of the woods yet, but we're getting very close. Take care, folks. Bye.